Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back here to the Mid-Atlantic Mauling League. It is opening night of Dungeon Bowl. Jedi George says, watching Error as dies just never gets old. I love it. I love to watch it. <laughs> it is game number two tonight here in this first day of competition in the Dungeon Bowl. We already had game number one. It was Take the Wind, Take Bad versus Womb Guardians. That game ended in a draw. Tonight, we've got another Division A matchup that's going to be uh, between uh, the league champion right now. Uh, that's, uh, you know what? You know what? No, 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 no. Let's do this right. Let's do this right. Tonight, it's going to be Jingles All the Way versus a Minor Matter, Venger versus Artificial Buddy, Orcs versus Underworld, SPB for subscribe for 16 months. Thank you so much. I genuinely appreciate it. So kind. Thank you. Anyhow, you can take a look at the standings here. After game one in the competition, take the win, take the bad. And Wound Guardians are currently in first place. Hey, with a whopping one point each. Tonight, Artificial Bunny and Jingles all the way. Uh, Artificial Bunny and Venger are going to have at it tonight. They're going to try to take the lead in Division A. Dungeon, the Dungeon Bowl is a divisional competition. There are two divisions, each with six teams. Both divisions will, have, will play round robin within their division. The top two teams from each division will advance to the top four at the end of five weeks. There, why, why do I always do this? <laughs> why do I always do this? <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Why? Hey, hey, oh, slow it down there. What? <laughs> well, there's a division B. You'll just have to trust me. None of them have played their games yet. <laughs> Oh, you know what? You know what? I bet you I know what the problem is. Let's see. Let's see. Let's go back to the standings. Hey, there we go. If I have, if I have my push to talk pressed, <laughs> then it just disappears. <laughs> there's Division B. You can see in Division B, there's an Underworld team. There's two Chaos teams, a Chaos Dwarf team, a Dark Elf team, and a Necro team. I am excited to see those played as well. It's going to be a great competition. The next five weeks are going to be super fun. Six games per week, 30 games of round robin before the cut to top four. I am super excited for it. Two brand new coaches as well. Man, what a great competition this is gonna be. The winner and the runner up will advance to the Blood Bowl. Just two spots left to try to make it. Who's it gonna be? Will Venger defend his title? Let's see what he's gonna do tonight. First up, we have Jingles all the way. Jingles all the way. This is Venger's team, he won the Dungeon Bowl last year with an Orc team. He's got a brand new one here for this competition. He ran an Underworld team in the Chaos Cup this year, took the Spike Magazine trophy off, and he's back in action to defend his title. Tonight he's bringing this team... <laughs> he's bringing this team in to try to defend his title. <laughs> I, I adore this team. <laughs> it's got an 11-man roster. He's got a troll, four blitzers, six, uh, I'm sorry, uh, four black orcs, a goblin, and a thrower. Pretty, pretty normal orc roster. He's got two TRRs to speak of. <laughs> the blitzers, of course, have the block skill. He's got the troll, the troll who can throw the goblin. He's got a thrower, of course. Those black orcs are the stars of this team. They have that strength of four. Uh, lots of armor. They are orcs, of course. Tonight, they will be up against a minor matter. Artificial Bunny coming in with a TV of 1210. He's giving up 220,000 gold in petty cash tonight. He has a 12-man roster. 
He has the troll. He has two blitzers. He has two throwers. He has two Skaven linemen. Everybody else is a goblin. Three TRRs, one cheerleader, one apothecary, four fan factor. He's got the fan factor advantage. That doesn't mean he'll end up with the fame advantage, but four versus zero is a pretty good bet. Um, you can see what he's been doing here. He's been picking up these mutation skills. That is how Underworld plays. He's got two players with claws. He has one with extra arms. That gives him a plus one on everything throwing related. So the thrower gets a plus one on passes, on catches, on picking up the ball, on interceptions. He's got it all. Lots of players with block as well. Two players with mighty blow. He's got claw and mighty blow on Mason drill bit. He is halfway to leveling up. Oh, he's gonna be a scary, scary player if he survives. Uh, all these goblins can be thrown by the troll, of course. All these goblins are super, super cheap. That means fouling's an option. That means throwing them in to tie up a player is an option. He has lots of options with the goblins. New coaches generally don't see the value. They're like, oh, they only have a strength of two. They have an AV of seven. What are they good for? They can dodge. They're stunty. They have the dodge skill. They're super, super cheap. That means you can throw them into situations that you don't want to throw expensive players into. Uh, Claw is frightening, Mighty Blow is frightening. That extra arm makes his passing game pretty solid as well. What's he gonna do against this Orc team? I think he just needs to play a ball game. If he sits back, leverages that passing game uh, on offense, it doesn't mean he necessarily has to throw, but it does mean he has to threaten the throw. If he does that, uh, it, if he keeps his option to chuck a goblin, if he can toss a goblin, uh, generally, when you're about three quarters of the way down the pitch, um, that's another threat that he can keep on the table. If he can keep these threats on the table, he forces Venger and Jingles all the way to have to uh, to have to defend against it. He forces him to have to spread out his options and to limit what he can do. I think that's how Artificial Bunny wins this game tonight. He keeps all of his options on the table, doesn't necessarily have to use it, but if he can force Venger to make the mistakes or to make the call, Venger says, you know what, I'm running out of time, I've got to commit to something, Artificial Bunny can react. Artificial Bunny has a lot of speed. Artificial Bunny has that devastating passing game. Artificial Bunny can afford to sit back and just take a blitz each turn. Again, two players with both Claw and Mighty Blow is scary stuff. Uh, so, Venger, he's got a brand new Orc team. He's got to play an Orc game. Orc's a pretty bashy team. Again, he has those four black Orcs. They have a strength of four. Uh, everybody's very, very resilient, to, except the Goblin, of course. The Goblin can be thrown by the Troll. That is an option that he will have if he gets about three quarters of the way down the pitch. Um, it doesn't even necessarily have to be three quarters of the way down the pitch. Whenever the option presents itself, you can do it. But generally speaking, if you get three quarters of the way down the pitch, uh, you're now in scoring position effectively with a Goblin throw. Um, so that's an option he has. He did pick up a thrower. Um, he could be tossing this ball to someone. We'll see what he's up to tonight. He's got four blitzers. He's got four black orcs. Uh, traditionally, we've seen him play orcs. Uh, a very cagey, a very bashy. I mean, they are a bashy team. Uh, he'll cage up. He'll plod down the pitch. He'll open up a hole. He'll run through that hole. You do have to be careful. Vengard taught us in season one. You have to be careful of those corners. If... Uh, it's hard to see, especially for new coaches, because everything's a square. Uh, you can see that the corners, a diagonal, is lo is literally longer than the edges. So you can intuit that it's longer, but in game mechanics, it's not longer at all. So diagonals look longer, you think it's longer, you think it's safe, you think that hole's not available, but it is available, and he can run through it. And he will take advantage of that all day long if you let him. So you have to make sure there are no holes open in your line, uh, and you need to stop that cage from moving. Uh, if you can do that, Venger's going to have to rely on his throwing game. Uh, it's not the best. He only has two TRRs. Again, it's a brand new team. He will be getting 220k in petty cash. He can do a lot with that. He can pick up all sorts of things. He could pick up uh, an extra, uh, some extra team training to get that extra reroll. He can do a whole bunch of stuff. We'll see what he wants to do. It's not a super amount of money. It is wizard money. Love to see a week one wizard, but we'll probably not going to see a week one wizard. But we'll see what he wants to do with that money. He can. He can leverage that money to sort of betray his strategy for tonight. We'll see what he wants to do. Uh, Bash versus uh, versus a, a pretty, uh, it, it's starting to get a, to be a pretty effective uh, Underworld team here. So uh, we'll see what happens here. Venger, Venger setting the pace to try to defend his title tonight. So we'll see if the coaches are ready to go. And if they are, 
We'll get this game underway. It looks like they're both in Discord, so we'll see if we'll start looking. We'll get this uh, second game of the competition underway. Man, Blood Bowl's back. I am happy for that. Final open competition of the season. This is the last shot for anyone to try to earn a spot in the Blood Bowl. The Blood Bowl is the invitational, the competition to determine who will be the seasonal champion. Currently, it's Nick Satan. He has already earned his spot in the upper bracket. Will he be able to defend his title? We have Clypheus, who has earned his spot in the upper bracket. He is the Chaos Cup champion. We have El Nuberino. We saw him in game one in the competition opener uh, just minutes ago. He has earned his spot in the lower bracket. Three teams are in the Blood Bowl. Two more have a uh, at least two. Well, the rules get a little complicated, but uh, more than likely two more have a spot here. We'll see what happens. Is it snowing? What? We have a snow game. Did we talk about passing? Maybe maybe we're not talking about passing. So this is a blizzard. So you can see uh, that you can only do quick and short passes in a blizzard and GFIs. Instead of failing on a one, they fail on a one or a two. So they're, they're, uh, they're twice as risky. So now they're pretty seriously risky. Looks like the Minor Matter is going to set up on defense here to start the game. Venger picked up extra team training. So he has three rerolls. That is a nice sweet spot to be in. Uh, two's a little thin. Three is uh, just right. Oh, did he pick up a star player? He did. He did. We have another loony on the pitch. Wow! <laughs> wow, he doesn't have a bribe to make it safe. So this will be the one drive he's in play, provided he keeps him on the pitch here. Wow, wow, wow. Chainsaw Thursday. Jedi George says, more chainsaws. <laughs> Three-man defensive line for Artificial Bunny here. Who has the fame advantage? Artificial Bunny did indeed pick up the fame advantage, has a plus one fame advantage that'll help him on a number of kickoff events. SP Beaver says, I really hope Chainsaw Thursday becomes a thing. <laughs> Just three gobos on the line here. Pretty shallow defense by Artificial Bunny. Got those blitzers in the linebacker position. Venger setting up his line. He's got an offset line here. Two by two. He's got one offset player on the left side here. Two players in either wide zone, two back to receive. Got that chainsaw on the pitch. He is going to have the chainsaw on the pitch for offense. That means he gets to control the momentum. That means he's probably looking to take as many players off the pitch as possible. Here's the kick. Perfect defense. A minor matter gets to reset their defense. They probably want to. We'll see how they go. They don't want to give up this block for sure. <laughs> Jedi George says, where do you think the meat for Taco Tuesday comes, comes from? <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Ugh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if I like Taco Tuesday anymore. <laughs> to just let it set out <laughs> and cure. <laughs> Just, just set it in some salt, it'll be fine, it's great, it's, it's delicious. A little cilantro, a little onion, mmm, perfect. All right, he reset his defense, he, he shifted his line to the left. A decent kick here by Artificial Bunny, balls on the 16 yard line in the left wide zone. And now Venger, the Dungeon Bowl champion. Turn one to kick off this competition for him and Artificial Bunny here in week one. Shifting players to the left. You will tend to see coaches take their uh, least risky actions first and their more risky actions last. If you take a risky action to start off your drive, 
uh, if you fail, generally if you fail any action, not any action, but most actions, it's called a turnover and your turn is over. You, you lose any remaining actions you had available. So if you take your least risky actions first, you ensure that you can take as many actions as possible. Uh, of course, good coaches will recognize this and they'll try to force you into positions where you prefer to take a risky action to start the drive off. Um, Blood Bowl is a game of luck mitigation. Uh, you roll a lot of dice and so when you're new to the game, you can say, oh man, this is just a game of pure randomness, pure chance. Uh, but what you realize uh, eventually as you play this game is you want to make your opponent roll dice. You don't want to roll dice yourself. You don't want to leave your your situation up to chance. You want your opponent to leave his up to chance. So the game is about uh, forcing your opponent to roll dice rather than you relying on your dice to be successful. One minute to go in turn one here for Jingles All The Way. Snowy game. Shifting his line to the left here. Keeping it perfectly intact. Still has a block to take on the line. He's going to blitz with the loony. Wow, didn't break armor. Just needed a 5 plus on that. But now gets the 3 die block as the backup. Gets a clean hit. And Mud is injured. Well done. Good action order there. One man player advantage now to Jingles all the way. See, he failed the chainsaw, but followed up with the three die block. Well done. Now for the ball pickup by Like a Good Neighbor, State Farm is there. 20 seconds to go. And that's it. Turn one back to a minor matter. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Artificial Bunny traditionally uh, has been doing, uh, has been excelling on defense, uh, really doing a good job. You, you've seen in season one, there was a coach named Hoggles uh, who was very good on, on defense. He played a very cautious defense and was able to just stop runs dead in their tracks. Artificial Bunny, on the other hand, uh, he's had a very effective defense where uh, he positions his defense to take advantage of opponent's uh, mistakes. So if you go for something risky, he's got somebody there to capitalize on it very quickly and try to turn that into a score. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. He is stunned. Under a minute to play for Artificial Bunny here, considering his options. He's probably not going to spread his defense too thin. Doesn't need to. He doesn't need to take too many risks. Oh, he's sending a blitzer. He's going to try to take out this loony ASAP. I think that's not a bad play. Remember, that chainsaw kicks back on the loony himself as well. So if he gets knocked down, uh, he's got to suffer the wrath of that chainsaw. As you can see right there, it was a five plus to armor break, and indeed he did. Good stun. Twenty five seconds to go for artificial bunnies, a minor matter. Took the blitz on the loony, I think on the star player loony, no doubt, or no less. I think that was a good call, but now he needs to consider where he wants his defense to be. Probably doesn't want to give up these blocks uh, to these black orcs. He does have trolls there marking him. The trolls have the strength of five, where the black orcs only have a strength of four. Sends another blitzer down. Pitch. He's going to go for the foul. He wants to take. The loony off the pitch, will it happen? No, but he gets sent off for his trouble, unfortunately. One man player, uh, 
tied up on the pitch. Two-man player advantage. Two-man player advantage that jingles all the way. Yes, indeed. 11 v9 on the pitch. Jingles on the way, all the way with a two-man player advantage into turn two. Here comes the blitz. Two die block. It's going to be a good knockdown. He has the block skill there. When you have the block skill and you get a both down result, you get to stay standing, whether you're the blocker or the blocky. Move the ball swiftly down pitch to his own four yard line. This will be where he likely cages up here. Two-die block against Shale is going to be a dodge push. Remember, all these goblins have the dodge skill. That means uh, if a defender stumbles result is rolled, that's the little starburst, the pal with the exclamation point in it, then they don't get knocked down. Instead, they get pushed away. Block and dodge are staple skills in the game of Blood Bowl. Almost always a good pickup. Oh, Chevelle is injured. Got a niggling injury. He That means he's going to be a plus one to any injury rolls in the future. He's going to be out for the rest of the game. Three-man player advantage for Jingles all the way. Turn two for a minor matter. They're down three players. It's just turn two. They got aggressive here. They went uh, behind the line of scrimmage. Um, they're in danger of having their team cut off here. We'll see... Uh, if they're going to rectify this or if they're going to continue to apply pressure to this cage. Really wanted to go hard in on that loony. Resets his defense first. Taking his time, deciding what he wants to do here. He's got two marks on the black orc. That's a one die block. Failed the really stupid roll with the troll. Oh, he went for the block. This is the danger with uh, big guys like this. Big guys uh, always have a negative trait, and at least one anyway. And Rockjaw here, the number one warpstone troll, uh, failed his really stupid roll. You have to roll it before you take your action. If you fail it, you stare off into space. Not only that, uh, you lose your action. And not only that, you lose all your tackle zones. This is a big loss for a minor matter here. This frees up all these tackle zones right here, all these spaces. And they, they will remain free until Rockjaw passes a really stupid roll at some point in the future. Took the block with the Blitzer on the... Uh, Right side of the cage here, decided not to follow up, didn't want to give that block coming back. Turn three now for Jingles all the way. They've got, they've got easy pickings here. They've got a block they can take on Grit. They've got a Blitz to consider. Lots of options. They still have their down star player, Ugroth. Vaker probably deciding where he wants the ball to end up at the end of this turn. And then he'll take his actions accordingly. It's gonna go after this Warpstone troll, it looks like. 
I've got a one die block on it currently. Blitz with the loony. This is that chainsaw in action. Gets a KO. Well done. Four man player advantage for Jingles all the way. That's why Artificial Bunny went after that chainsaw player. Um, he didn't want to have to suffer it for an entire drive, perhaps an entire half. Jingles all the way now, shuffling players around. It's going to keep that loony safe, looking for a spot for the ball carrier as well. Ball carrier is number five, like a good neighbor. The number four, Blitzer, ch 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 chia we we'll move to the back of this cage. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. The number two blitzer. we we'll move to the right side of the cage. Two die block over on the left side of the cage. This is against Grit. We talked about this at the beginning of the, uh, of the turn. Good block, didn't break armor. Blitz was spent by the loony. This ball's going to end at Jingles All The Way's own two-yard line, right at the line of scrimmage here. He's also at center pitch. He has lots of movement options. Good tie up there with uh, Ho 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 Green Giant right at the front of the cage. Ho Ho Ho. Both teams with all three TRRs remaining. You pay for team rerolls in this game. You can either buy them uh, when you create your team uh, or later on. When you buy them when you create your team, you get them at a discount. Uh, or you can get extra team training before a match. That gives you an extra TRR just for that match only. Jingles all the way picked up one of those. You get to use a team reroll to reroll any die you want on your turn or any die that you roll. Uh, you can only use one team reroll per turn, and once you use it, you have to use the second result. Because you're rolling D6 is generally in Blood Bowl, even when you block, use your block dice, they don't say one to six on them, of course, but they're still a D6, they're still six-sided dice. Uh, having a reroll changes odds immensely. Uh, the canonical example is if you have a 50-50 shot on a die roll and you get to reroll it, that becomes a 75% shot. That's a big difference. So having a team reroll available or any sort of reroll available really make $5 foot long gets knocked out. That's now down to a three-man player advantage for uh, Jingles All The Way. Good hit by a minor matter. But it changes the odds so significantly that you really need to respect team rerolls. You need to respect uh, when you have them. In other words, don't just burn them on any reroll that you fail. And you also need to respect when your opponent has them. If your opponent has a reroll, you need to keep that in mind when you take your actions and understand that, sure, maybe that pickup's a 50-50, but if he's got a reroll, it's really a 75% if he wants to take it. So you need to keep that in mind uh, when you decide to say, just leave him alone. Or, you know, leave him alone because uh, odds are maybe he can't pick it up or odds are he can't make the block. Those rerolls change those odds immensely. Turnover, final turn of uh, the first quarter here begins with Jingles all the way. They're gonna get the stand-up blitz to get the push on Rockjaw. Jaw. 
And now it is Jingles all the way's turn to fail their really stupid roll. Ho, 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 Green Giant. He is out for a turn. He's staring off into the beautiful snow. Loses his tackle zones. Good block on the Blitzer. Gets a stun on Jackhammer. Sends a player down pitch. Sends ba da ba ba ba. Down to uh, Artificial Bunny, or down to uh, a Minor Matters eight yard line. He's going to try to set up a cage here on the six. There it is. You can see he's very shy. He doesn't, or he, he shies away from that GFI. You don't want to fail a GFI in a blizzard. In a blizzard, it fails on a one or a two instead of just a one. GFIs can be um, deceptive. You know, new players think generally, uh, Jedi George makes a great point. No one gives that corner anyway. Uh, but new players generally say, oh, it only fails on a one. Uh, generally, uh, game players, good hit here on the Looney, trying to take him out of this game. Doesn't take him off the pitch, does stun him, however. New uh, game players, uh, typically new game players, to any game, really, they, they have three sort of modes to die rolls. They think 50-50, uh, impossible, or 100% possible. Either 0%, 50%, or 100%. Uh, and that can make GFIs very deceiving. You, on a GFI, you say, well, there's only one face that fails. Uh, gets the, oh no, got the knockdown here, spent the reroll, got a KO out of it, but unfortunately it's gonna be the end of the drive here. Uh, spent the reroll here, failed the loner roll. Loner means if you're a loner and you wanna spend a TRR, you have to roll a die first. And uh, if you fail that die roll, not only do you not get to use the reroll, but you spend it anyway. Uh, but GFIs can be very deceiving because you think, oh, there's five faces that succeed, one that doesn't. What are the odds that I fail? And you tend to think to yourself, the odds are like 90% that I will succeed, but that's not true. The odds are 83% that you'll succeed. But you can think of that a number of different ways, right? Like if you, if you do six GFIs, you know, your odds greatly diminish of, of succeeding on all of them. So uh, it, it's very easy to think that it's safe. And then when you're in a blizzard situation where now it's down to a third, uh, it is much, 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 much less, less safe than it was even with that one. Jedi George says it really is a 900% chance of failure <laughs> if the roll matters. <laughs> It's in the rules, 900%. This is the first turn of the second quarter. Turn five for Jingles all the way. This is, this is the standard, the patented Wenger play. You can see he's been opening those holes and he's just been moving the ball down them. Bam, bam, bam. Bam. He continues to make lots of lots of forward movement here. He's now on Artificial Bunny's 12-yard line. Averaging that strength to his advantage. Pulling those players for those assists so he can get those two die blocks. Turn five back to a minor matter. Can they reset here? They're in a difficult position. Most of their team is behind the cage. All of their team is behind the cage, in fact. Uh, most of their team is tied up. They have one player who's, oh no, and the troll is going to stay on the ground. He loves the snow. He's still really stupid. He's just going to stare at it and look at it. Only two players that are in the drive right now that are not marked. 
That is the Skaven Thrower, Boring Augur, as well as Shale, the Underworld Goblin, number nine and number four. And they are way, way, way to the right of the cage. What does Artificial Bunny do here? Does he just try to reset and take his dodges? Dodges are, are fairly safe with, uh, with goblins. Yeah, Dodge and Stunty, well done. So goblins have the dodge skill. That means they get a free reroll. They don't have to spend a TRR. In fact, they can't spend a TRR. You can only ever reroll a given result one time. Uh, but they're also stunty, so they don't even care about tackle zones when they dodge. So it's, oh, there's that failed GFI. Spent the reroll. Got a push out of it. Jedi George said it fails 900% of the time. Jedi George said, I would have stood up uh, the guy down pitch first. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that's a safe stand up. Try to get him back into the drive here. It is a different game, though. It's a different game between playing and watching. I, that goes for any game, really. But man, when you're under the gun, under the pressure, you've got two minutes to play. Whoo, it is so different than when you see I can watch someone play. <laughs> Turn six now for Jingles all the way. They've got an almost entirely free left wide zone here. They can score with two GFIs, but remember, probably not going to try to do that. Not in a blizzard. <laughs> well said. SPB says two minutes is a lot shorter when it's your two minutes to play. Well said indeed. Jingles all the way here, considering their options. He's got a number of options. He's in control. He's in control of the pace. He's in control of the pitch. He's in control of the ball. He can decide what direction he wants to go. He can decide what blocks he wants to take. He can decide how far forward he wants to advance. Starts to turn off with the block. Gets an injury on Mason Drillbit. Well done. He will be out of the game unless the Apothecary is spent. Apothecary is spent here. He will go back to the substitutes. That's a better Apothecary than mine, man. <laughs> my Apothecary just kills my guys. <laughs> Four-man player advantage, I think, on the pitch right now. Let's see. Uh, he doesn't count. He has a one... Two, three, four, five man player advantage. Three man player advantage? Some number of player advantage. Jedi George says Vinegar is going to zag back to the right, I bet. And it looks like he's trying to do just that here. It looks like he's setting up a cage. Yes, indeed. Good call. He is in full control right now. He, um, not a lot of incentive to score any time before turn eight. He'll only do that if he feels his scoring potential is threatened uh, or if his cage is under threat. But uh, so far, he's, he's, he's showing you why he is the Dungeon Bowl champion. <laughs> Shadow Killer says, your apothecary was drunk. <laughs> oh, that's what I forgot. I forgot to tell him not to drink tonight. Not while you're on duty. That's my fault as a coach, really. Two die block gets the push on Boring Augur. And that's it. Turn six now for a minor matter. Three turns to try to stop this score. <laughs> SV Beaver said, first game of the tournament. Mistakes like that are common. It's true. You know, sometimes you forget the time. You forget to tell your apothecary not to drink before the game. He says, oh, you have a gout eye? Don't worry about it. Let me stab you in the chest 15 times. No, no thanks, no thanks. I'll keep the gout eye, thank you.
<laughs> SB Beaver said, pretty sure the refs were drinking too. Pretty sure the, the refs were lining their pockets. <laughs> That's what I think the refs were doing. Minor men are choosing the mark, the front right side of the cage with Shale. Oh my goodness. Hey, we'll see what happens here. Wow, marking the front of the cage with another goblin. What's the plan here? It's gonna go for the blitz, yes indeed. Two die blitz on the corner. Interesting choice here. Got the blitz, got the follow up. Now he's marked the ball carrier. He's in real danger of the of the blitz. Maybe even just the block. One die block over on the left side of the pitch. This will be a good knockdown against against 1877 cars for kids, which I still have not seen that video. <laughs> Turn seven now for Jingles all the way there in scoring position if they want to score now. Again, I, I don't think it's necessary, but we'll see what he wants to do. Pretty good spot if he wants to take these blocks. Here's one. Here comes the loony blitz. Chainsaw, oh no, the chainsaw kicked back on the loony, failed the reroll, failed the loner reroll. And So you have to roll for the chainsaw first on a one, it kicks back and hits you right in the face. And now a minor matter with an opportunity, albeit a slim one, to try to maybe knock this ball out of the hand of uh, of like a good neighbor. Uh, maybe try to punt the ball if he gets super, super duper lucky. Rockjaw will move in to the action here. He's behind the cage. He's marking Chili's baby back ribs and plop plop fizz fizz the black orc and the thrower gets the uh, takes the one die block against the ball carrier. He only gets a push and follows up. Ooh, yikes! One die block. He's gonna get a chain push here. Where is he going to put? All right. Wow. This will work out. Sort of. So he gets a good knockdown here. Wow, he injures Chili's baby back ribs. I think Vanker wants his baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. Well done, good knockdown here. Blitz is still on the table. Blitz is not on the table? All right, that's cool. <laughs> Barbecue sauce. Final turn here. Jingles all the way. Needs to score here. If they want to score in this first half, which they absolutely do. Artificial Bunny. Wow. How, how. After an unfortunate chainsaw kickback and a turnover, has a good opportunity here to stop the drive, stop the score. Good block to the front of the cage. Uh, block on Jackhammer and then a blitz to score, I think. I think that's the play. Oh, he doesn't have the block on Jackhammer. Oh, yikers, 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 yikers.
It's gonna. Oh boy, has to re-roll that. Gets the pal. It's gonna be a dodge either way. Gonna be a dodge either way. Here we go. He's gonna take this dodge here. Dodge the score. Failed the dodge. He spent the reroll. That will be it. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is down. Wow. That. Wow. What. What a drive that was. It looked like Jingles All the Way was putting on a clinic. And just like that, a minor matter stops the score. SP Beaver says Blitz would have been a free dodge there. Yeah, that's that's uh, uh, the Blitz over here, which is what I thought he would do. But um, but I don't think he could get the block on this guy. Ba da ba 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 is stunned. That's how I feel when I eat McDonald's. <laughs> ba da ba ba. Oh. <laughs> Turn eight here, nothing to do, but just maybe get some SVP if he can. Or take some blocks if that's that's his preference. <laughs> He's gonna take the block here. Two die goblin block, wow! Shale putting in the work here. Let's see if he can get anything out of it. Doesn't get anything of consequence out of it, but good for him. Good for Shell. 0-0 zero, zero at the half. It looked like a sure thing that Jingles All the Way was going to score, but a minor matter stopped them in their tracks after a failed chainsaw blitz. And now a minor matter is going to get their opportunity up. I was going to say up to bat, but that's the wrong sport. <laughs> They're going to have their opportunity on the pitch on offense to try to score here in the second half of the game. McGrath, the secret weapon, of course, will get sent off the pitch. We are in week one of the Dungeon Bowl. Five weeks of round robin. Six games a week. Two divisions. The top two teams in each division will advance to the top four. They'll advance to the Dungeon Bowl semifinals. Uh, Jenny George says 8v9 now. Let's see. It's uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 for a minor matter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It is 9v8. One man player advantage for a minor matter. Folks might be saying to themselves, wow, that's strange. It works are pretty strong. They are, but remember, minor matter, he has three players with mighty blow, two with mighty blow and claw. Goes all the way with a three-man line, a minor matter with a six-man line. They're going to try to block this line down. Uh, probably not going after Ho 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 Green Giant. We'll see what he wants to do here. Two back to receive. Remember, there's no long passing so long as it's snowing. The weather could change after the kickoff. We'll see. But quick and short passes only. No long passes, no bombs. Really hampers the passing game. Brilliant coaching. Wow, a minor matter is going to get an extra TRR. A whopping four team rerolls for a minor matter. Turn number nine to get the second half underway. It's going to set up some ball protection here. Often a pretty good idea to send a player back to defend the ball. Even if you're not going to pick up the ball, if you just send a player back to get a tackle zone on the ball, uh, that's usually pretty good. That's a free move to do. Two die block results in a knockdown on the number six black orc. That was the left side of the pitch. Block on the right side coming up. Looks like a one die block currently. Yep, he's just going to take it. Takes the block, gets a push. A 
I'm surprised you put goblins on either side of this troll. If the if the goal is to just tie up the troll, um, one goblin will do it. Under a minute play. Minor matter took the two blocks on the line. Uh, almost certainly not going to block down the big guy. He's got some protection on the ball and now deciding what he wants to do next. He's going to move forward. Looking to take the blitz on like a good neighbor, it looks like. Making a two die blitz. Good stunty dodge. Over to the right. No, he's going to take the block uh, to the right instead of to the left. This was against ch 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 chia Pop, 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 pop. Good block. Good, or good push, rather. Trying to exert some force here. Moves the blitzer back a couple of spaces. Wants to cover up that hole. Good stunty dodge. Leaves the leaves the troll free. Wow. <laughs> just move those goblins in there just to dodge them. Just to show them, show them that he could do it. <laughs> turn nine now for Jingles all the way. Their first turn on defense here. Jingles all the way down three players. We'll see how he compensates here. Good block with the block skill. Over on the left side of the line, that was Squibbit, who was knocked down. He, if he's given the opportunity to block these goblins, he will almost certainly take it. Goblins are very squishy. If you can uh, kill, if you can take players off the pitch, that's less actions your opponent has. So you might say, oh, goblins are worthless. If you take one off, why don't you go after the high dollar player? Well, sometimes it's better to just take players off the pitch. Two die block, good block on Shale over on the right side of the pitch. Doesn't get anything out of it though. He's applying some pressure on the ball here. He moves uh, Ch -ch -ch Chia, the number four blitzer, down pitch. Getting very aggressive here. The blitz has been spent. Wow, getting super aggressive. I, I think he's cognizant of the fact that the passing game is very, very limited now in the blizzard. And he said, you know what? I don't need to have safeties. I don't need to take a step back. Uh, I don't need to worry about you passing it any further than a short pass. We'll see how Artificial Bunny compensates. He he could very well send a send a goblin down pitch as a receiver. I I, I don't know if that's a good idea. Um, looks like he's going to shift this would be cage to the left. So the ball pickup worked out. He has those extra arms. It gives him a plus one on all. Ball-related things, uh, picking up the ball, throwing the ball, intercepting the ball, catching the ball. Um, but you always fail on a one, you always succeed on a six, no matter the modifiers. So the best you can ever do is a five-sixth chance or an 83% chance. Blitz on the right side of the line, gets a push, spends the TRR, spent that free TRR to get the POW. Well done. Wanted to open up the hole, moves the blitzer down pitch. Failed. 
the dodge. Spent the reroll, failed the dodge with Jackhammer, and he's injured for his trouble. He'll be out next game to boot with a groin, uh, groin strain that is unfortunate. It's all tied up on the pitch. 8v8 now. That's another aspect of Blood Bowl. I'm not saying that that should have been the case here, but another aspect of Blood Bowl is sometimes it's best not to take an action, right? If you say, want to dodge someone away to safety, uh, you've got to roll that die first. And if you get knocked down, then you've got to roll for armor and you might you might injure yourself. So sometimes, uh, or even with big guys, right? We talked about how the big guys have negative skills. You usually have to roll for a first. And if you fail it, something bad happens, like the chainsaw kickback, for example. Um, so sometimes it's better to just not take the action. Just leave the player standing, keep him with his tackle zones. If it's a player with, say, really stupid, um, just let him exert tackle zones uh, and don't take the action. Uh, that's a that's a hard thing for new coaches to learn in football as well. Uh, you, you feel like you're leaving actions on the table often. But again, that <laughs> after that whole diatribe, I don't think that was the case here. I think the dodge was a fine call to make. It just didn't work out. Keeping that pressure on the ball carrier. Ch -ch -ch Chia on the back corner of the ball carrier. You can see here that uh, it's only a 1MA difference between the ball carrier and this blitzer. So while the ball carrier can is faster and can run away faster, if forward momentum can be stopped, uh, this blitzer can catch the ball carrier very easily. And just like that, that's that failed really stupid roll that we were talking about. Uh, no tackle zones being exerted here by the troll. Double Skulls had to spend the reroll here on the left side of the pitch. Gets a push against Squibbit. Was looking for a lot more than that. He's down to two team rerolls in the second turn of the half. The goblin to get in front of the ball carrier here, but now there's a hole in center pitch. Turn 11. Will a minor matter take advantage of that hole? Will he shift back to the right? Honestly, he could go for the blitz on the blitzer. Nope, he's going to press forward in the left wide zone. See if he sets up a full cage or a half cage here. Takes the mark on ba da ba ba ba. Failed the dodge roll. Oh no, and shit. Roll enough dice, you're bound to fail. And now, Jingles all the way has an opportunity to go after this ball. Wenger undoubtedly thinking about the best way to go about this. Gonna move his players who are free first. You very easily get the two die block on Boring Augur, but what does he do after that is the question. There's the assist. Blitz coming up on the ball carrier. Two die blitz. The ball carrier does have the block skill. <gasps> He's gonna have to re-roll that. Gets the pal. Well done. 
Jingles all the way down to just one reroll. Wow, look at that punch right to the face. <laughs> Favorable bounce. The ball scatters in to the hands of the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. The number 10 goblin uses his remaining movement points to get some protection on that goblin. Boring Augur, no doubt, come take the stand up blitz. Ho, 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 Green Giant. Getting back into this drive here. Two die block gets a pow here. Trying to get that player advantage. Doesn't work out. 8v8 still on the pitch. Thinking about these do yeah, thinking about these dodges. Good dodge. Marks the number six Skaven lineman. Let's pick the second. Two die block back in no man's land. This will be a good knockdown. Good KO. And now jingles all the way with the one man player advantage. 8v7 on the pitch. 8v6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Wow! 8v6. Two man player advantage. Gets the thrower next to the ball carrier. Stand up blitz. Here we go. Two die blitz. That'll work out due to the block skill. <gasps> and the goblin is injured, unfortunately. He's not going to be waking up. The best part of waking up is waking up. And he is not going to be. Good scatter. Is he going to try to pick it up with the thrower here? He does have extra arms. Why not? Yes, indeed. Well done. Good recovery by a minor matter here. SB Beaver says, getting close to having more players off the pitch and on. Not Folgers! <laughs> Folgers, no! <laughs> Good recovery by Minor Manor. They still have all three team rerolls. Jingles all the way down to one with five turns remaining in the game. Two die block back at the line of scrimmage is going to be a push against the number six Black Orc. Longer, bit, longer with Big Red. I don't remember. I don't remember the jingle. Longer with Big Red. Pulls pick the second back to try to play some coverage. Pulled him back a little too far. He said, you know what? I want to go go around the other side. Good dodge. Final turn of the third quarter. Jingles all the way. Briefly tangled with the ball. That's what it is. Some oh, da -da 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 longer, da -da 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 -da. longer with big red. That big red freshness lasts right through it. Your fresh breath goes on and on <laughs> while you chew it. Say goodbye a little longer. Make it last a little longer. <laughs> Good dodge for the blitz here on the ball carrier. Two die blitz. That's gonna work out well. Oh wait, is this dodge push? No. Well done. <laughs> SP Beaver says our leak really has really sold out to the sponsors. There's <laughs> like there's <laughs> like 80s and 90s sponsors. <laughs> is Big Red? I guess Big Red's still around. I don't know. I don't chew gum. GFI in the blizzard works out well done.
Well done indeed. A minor matter now. Fourth quarter begins. Can they get this ball back? They recovered briefly, but Jingles all the way said, no, sir, this is my ball, not yours. You think I won't GFI in the snow? Watch me. Have you seen these orcish cleats? They're amazing. They're made out of the teeth of goblins. One die blitz is going to be a push against like a good neighbor onto the ball. Favorable, favorable scatter here. It's going to be a minus on the pickup. If he wants to pick it up with the thrower, it's going to be a dodge as well. He says, no, sir. Failed the pickup. Spends the TRR. He's going to make this a 75% chance on the pickup. Failed the pickup. That is a turnover. SPB says, I feel bad for thinking he was somewhat safe back there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I mean, good for Wenger, right? Good for Wenger for seeing the opportunity. Oh, jingles all the way. Big guy fails. The really stupid roll. Not only does he lose his action, that's one less mark on, uh, on this goblin here. Gets a push on Boring Augur, the thrower. There's another thrower over here, Steam Shovel. Made it a little tougher to make this block by, uh, by Ch -ch -ch Chia. Here comes the Blitz. One die Blitz gets a pow out of the Blitz. Oh, boy. Oh, and that's an excellent stun. Well done. Well done by Jingles all the way. A minor matter running out of time to get this ball down pitch. Jingles all the way, went for the ball pickup, spent the TRR, good pickup. Moves the blitzer off the sideline, doesn't want to get surfed naturally. Gets a push on the goblin. One man player advantage. He's got one more block to take. Yep, and he only got a push out of it. Turn 14 now for a minor matter. Can they get this ball, not only get this ball back, but start, start running down pitch. They only have three turns. If they want to win this game, they've got to start thinking about getting somebody down pitch. If they want to draw this game, then that's a different story altogether. They just need to stop the score. Good dodge. Two die blitz gets a pow. Gets a pow on the ball carrier. Oh, it's out of bounds. Where's it going to scatter? Oh boy, now you got to get somebody down pitch. Wow. How do you stop plop plop fizz fizz? One, two, three, four, five, I, I, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have the GFI, right? Oh no. That roll's not gonna work. The sun with the claws, probably, that's a favorable trade. But oh boy. 
grit is going to have to pray to Nuffle here. Turn 14 now. Jingles all the way is the one who has to worry about trying to score. Two die blitz for sure coming up against Grit. Three die block coming up against Grit. Jingles all the way, tying up as many players as he can here. Not a lot of players to play with. Here's that three die block coming. Good clean hit on Grit, got the pow. Didn't break armor, unfortunately, but that means, more importantly here, Grit, when you stand up, it takes three MA to stand up unless you have certain skills. So Grit has just lost three MA. Turn 15 now, a minor matter has to end in the scoring position here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, they cannot. Well, they can. <laughs> I spoke too soon. <laughs> oh no, he GFI'd! Oh! <laughs> He's gotta spend the TRR here. Good GFI, he's trying to get out of harm's way. Let's see. That's a double GFI to block. Ooh, I, I actually think that was a pretty good call. Oh my goodness, what a game this has been. What a game this has been. One die block on the on the troll, rather. Uh, got the push here. Just taking the block because he could. Not too risky. He has the block skill. The troll does not. Not a whole lot of players left on the pitch. Are you guys okay? Are you guys freezing? You guys have blankets? Ties up number nine. Yep. Yeah. Gotta do it. You gotta do it. Force jingles all the way to make as many die rolls as they can. Oh, is he not gonna try to stop the score? said, you know what? I'm not risking it. I'm not putting my guy in that much danger. Turn 16 now, a minor matter is just going to walk this ball into the end zone. Wow, what a turn of events. One to zero, a minor matter takes the lead. One turn left unless there's a riot. What? What a game this has been. Wow. Wow. That was hard fought. Doug the Minotaur says, very nice. Very nice indeed. One Black Orcs coming back onto the pitch. Nobody for a minor matter is coming back on the pitch. Nuffle said, you know what? You got a TV. What more do you want from me? <laughs> and he had five players on <laughs> five players on the pitch, five v eight, huh? <laughs> this is Blood Bowl, man. <laughs> Three man player advantage for Jingles all the way. The only way they can come out with a draw is if 
There is a riot. A minor matter protecting his two throwers. Jingles all the way is going to put some players on the line. Um, how many is going to keep back to receive is the question. Two, he's not going to not going to play games. Doesn't matter. Might as well put put everybody on the line. Yeah, everybody on the line on the right side of the pitch here. So you can have a maximum of two in either wide zone. You have to have at least three on the line of scrimmage in the center area. He's going to try to block down this whole line. We'll see what happens. Probably not going to be a, oh no, probably not going to be a risky pitch, or a risky kick, doesn't matter. The weather is going to change to nice sunny weather, but Jingles all the way is not going to have an opportunity to score. They're going to block down this line, probably take a foul, maybe pass the ball for some SPP. They don't have, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> they don't have the team reroll to make anything safe. That'll be it, one to zero. A minor matter takes this one. Wow! Wow, what a game that was. Well played by both coaches. Holy moly. 12 SVP for a minor matter. Uh, 11 for Jingles all the way. Great game played by both coaches. What a fun game that was. Jingles all the way. Dominated ball position in that first half. Just had a fantastic drive and lost it on the the secret weapon fa uh, failing that, that chainsaw roll. I mean, that's how it happens, man. Oh, man, I love Blood Bowl. <laughs> I love Blood Bowl. <laughs> what a fun game this is. All right, one to zero. A minor matter takes this one. Uh, we'll take a look at the schedule before we leave for the evening. Next up will be Monday, August 1st. That will also be a doubleheader. That will be a Division B doubleheader. That will be between Bonsai Legends and Genus Chaos. That is Berserker Legends, a newcomer to the league, and Malik. Uh, that's Dark Elf versus... No, no, no. That's Underworld versus Chaos. That will be Monday, Monday, August 1st at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And that will be followed up immediately afterward with Nehide and Nuffle at Pity the Ghoul. Nehide and Nuffle coached by Clypheus, the Chaos Cup champion. Pity the Ghoul coached by League veteran Dead Fred. He has a killer Necro team. That'll be a fun one to watch. Chaos Doors versus Necro. That'll be Monday, August 1st at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Both will be live streams. We'll be watching them together. And then the schedule or the week will conclude that Tuesday with a live match with a replay match followed by a live match I'm excited for more Blood Bowl I hope you guys are too I had a blast tonight um, if you want to watch more Blood Bowl with us you can check us out uh, check out our schedule uh, right here on Twitch you can also check it out on Twitter and on Facebook you can see the information for those accounts right there on your screen play Blood Bowl what a fun game this is what a fun game this is did you watch these two games tonight what a fun game uh, I'm excited for more matches. We got plenty, plenty more left in the Dungeon Bowl. And don't forget, this will all culminate in the Blood Bowl to determine who this year's league champion will be. I hope to see you guys back here Monday night for two more games of Blood Bowl. Until then, enjoy your weekend and uh, have a good night.